Well, I wanted to say thank you so much um, for joining today. Um, and thank you so much for ISM to be able to put this together with us. And we definitely appreciate it. We do want to thank you again for being a Sage customer. We appreciate your business. And today we are going to be reviewing uh, credit card processing powered by Sage Payment Solutions. And uh, my name is Rich Engelhardt. I am your Connected Services Specialist here at Sage. And Sherry was uh, speaking on the line earlier. We also have Maya Green, your Account Executive with Sage Payment Solutions. And Karen O'Callaghan is not in the, on the call, but I believe she's your Customer Account Manager. Um, so if there are any additional questions about Sage or any functionality, um, please be able to contact Karen as well. With that said, um, our agenda for today is why accept credit cards, what are the integration benefits, who is Sage Payment Solutions, uh, what is the credit card processing module, we'll take a look at authorization and settlement and how that relates to our solution, we'll get into the demonstration, and uh, after the demonstration there is a current promotion going on that I will um, briefly speak about, um, and then we can also open it for questions and answers. Um, if you do have any questions throughout the presentation, um, please type it into the chat and, and we can try to answer them as we go along. Um, I believe that Bryce will have to notify me um, as I do not see um, messages or at least my chat doesn't show any right now um, as well as it does kind of auto hide. So we will be able to answer those questions and I believe that the phones are not muted so you can also ask them aloud as well. With that said, we will um, get into why accept credit cards. So it helps to increase sales by 15 to 50 percent. This was a source um, from a company called Tango Marketing. Um, and as a result, it's a convenience for your customers. So customers don't have to carry around cash. They don't have to um, send in a check. So as well, a lot of customers like to pay with credit card because they can get rewards points or um, mileage. So customers are definitely shopping with businesses that accept credit cards. And there's also faster delivery of goods and services to both new and existing customers. This helps um, improve your cash flow, as well as with the improvement of cash flow by being able to accept credit cards, um, you are able to get those faster, um, the goods out faster, excuse me, um, for your customers. So they will be able to um, purchase those goods and be able to have those goods uh, arrive faster as a result of having that improvement of cash flow as you are able to order those goods um, more quickly as you do have the cash and you're not waiting for checks to be sent. Um, it also allows you to focus on revenue generation and not cash collection since you're not waiting for the cash um, to come in and you're not having to make calls to have terms get paid or customers um, who said that they've been sending in their check. Um, allows you to be able to use your time and be able to use that time back on um, activities that help the company make money. With that said, we'll take a look at the top three benefits of integrating electronic payment and accounting systems. And this was a study um, done in 2007 by the Association for Financial Professionals. And one thing I like to point out are all the companies that were questioned in the study. Um, they had revenues under $1 billion and revenues over $1 billion. So very large and very small companies. And they all had the same top three benefits and were very, very close on the actual um, percentages. So as you can see here, um, the top three benefits were more efficient posting and reconciliation, a cost savings, and a working capital improvement. And that brings us to who is Sage Payment Solutions. So Sage Payment Solutions is a division of Sage North America. They've been in business for over 20 years and been part of the Sage family for over five and a half years. It provided services to over 140,000 companies. And we offer a wide range of payment products and solutions for small to medium. And as we continue to integrate with our ERP applications, some large size businesses as well. We have options available for various types of operating environments, such as a retail, as we see in the middle here with a credit card swipe machine. Um, on the right hand side, we see a mouse for customers being able to order the, over the internet. Um, so we do have you know, mail order, telephone order, mobile, many different ways to be able to process payments. And we also have five offices with over 144 SAGE employees. 
With that said, what is the credit card processing module? Well, it's a module within Mass 9200 that allows you to authorize cards directly through these other modules. As we see here on the left, we have sales order, sales order invoice, cash receipts, dot order, and dot store. Um, it is not a module that you specifically go into. Um, it is um, done through the other modules. So with that said, it is built directly into Mass. Um, so it is part of the system from that perspective. We've integrated it very well. And as you can see here, you can maintain multiple credit cards per customer, as well as uh, it supports multiple credit card types. So it helps support MasterCard, Visa, Discover, American Express, and I believe there may be a few others out there that it supports as well. It also gives you security and peace of mind. Um, all the credit card numbers are encrypted and those numbers, uh, all the numbers are encrypted and everything holds up to PCI compliance standards, as well as we have integrated processing, um, which helps to reduce potential credit card security breaches. So since you're not writing the number down on a piece of paper, nobody's able to steal that paper or look over your shoulder and write it down, um, as well as um, because everything is integrated without two separate systems, um, helps on the IT resources as well. We have card not present features, such as address verification service. Address verification service does help with your processing um, rates. It does make sure that you are getting the best rate possible. And then we also have card verification value, um, too. And the CUV2 number does not affect your rates. Um, it is there for security. And essentially, it proves that um, customers do have the card in hand while, they are, um, while you are entering in that information. So from that perspective, um, both of these features are available. Um, they are not required. However, if you would like to require it for your company, you can make it a, a requirement um, as a result. And then we also have Mass 90 and 200 rule-based securities. So if your um, employee does not have access to accounts receivable, then they won't have access to the customer maintenance part of accounts receivable. Um, as a result, all the numbers are still encrypted, so even if the person was able to get to see um, the customer account or get into accounts receivable cash receipts entry in order to process something, although they would be able to process, um, they actually will not be able to see the credit card numbers. So um, all the security that is built into Mass does work with the credit card processing module as well. And we also have transaction data um, that's retained in Mass to help with reconciliation. So we have a credit card settlement report and a deposit transaction report for deposits made through sales order. And so what does authorization and settlement look like with Mass 90 and 200? Well, you're going to get an authorization request. That request is going to go from Mass 90 and 200 into Sage Payment Solutions and what we call our virtual terminal. It will go from the virtual terminal to the processor and we'll go from the processor to the issuing bank. The issuing bank will send back an authorization response. That response will go back um, through the processor and that credit card processing network to Sage Payment Solutions and through our virtual terminal and back into Mass 90 and 200. From there, settlement occurs directly from Sage Payment Solutions to your bank. So you are able to um, continue leveraging your banking relationship um, from the perspective of depositing funds into the bank. Um, and those funds are deposited within 24 to 48 hours. And with that said, we'll go ahead and start the um, credit card processing module and show you the virtual terminal as well. So as you can see here, we have my mass screen. And the first thing I'll do is go into accounts receivable to show you the customer maintenance. Um, as we see here, we're just going to select our customer. And we will be able to select on the second tab, where it says additional, the primary credit card information. We have our default payment type of credit card. We have our credit card number encrypted, as well as the uh, credit card payment type. If we want to change the main card, on the account, we simply click the magnifying glass, and we can select any other card that is on account. If we want to change any of the information on any of the cards or add a new card, we simply click the credit card button, and we can enter in a new card number, or we can go ahead and search for an existing card to change some of the information. If the card is a primary card, it will let you know that the card is the primary card right here. 
We have our credit card uh, payment type, which today we will change to Visa Sale. We have our cardholder name, the expiration date, and the billing address of the card. This is important as this helps with the address verification service, so you do want to make sure that this is the correct billing address of the card for the best possible rates. We also have uh, comments um, and a corporate ID or PO. You can also, if you are using eBusiness Manager, make this an eBusiness Manager enabled card. One thing you'll note is that the CVV number is not here. Um, it is not PCI compliant to store that number anywhere. Um, so please do not store that number here or in the comments um, as it is not compliant to store. So we will go ahead and accept this card and we will accept it for a customer. Now our system is um, very robust. It can be used multiple ways. Um, today we will be going through and um, processing in order through sales order and we will be taking um, the money up front right now as we're you know placing this order we're shipping this order out today and we will do everything um, all at once our system does take pre-authorizations as well and as well if you don't take anything at um, sales order entry you can also take the information and process the sale at invoice data entry as well the system is really built to um, work the way that your company has your current um, workflow set up within Mass. Again, so you know it is very, um, very robust, very dynamic. It allows you to process the way that you're working today, as well as what we'll see a little later on in the presentation is um, when we go into accounts receivable and cash receipts entry, we'll also be able to process an already existent invoice. So from here, we'll be able to enter in our customer PO number. And we will go to our lines tab. And we will select our item to sell. And we will go to our totals tab. Um, on the totals tab, you'll be able to see that the payment type has been selected as credit card. Um, and you'll see that our deposit button has already been checked since this is the default for the customer um, that we selected in accounts receivable. Um, it is the default that we will see on our total screen. We also have a freight amount, so at this point we can always enter in our freight um, to be able to charge for it as well. Um, with that said, it leaves our deposit amount for whatever number we would like to be able to take. So um, you can always take a deposit on less um, or you can take it on the total. In this case, we are going to be paying for the entire order at this time, so we will charge 9429. Excuse me. When we enter that in, you can see here it auto populates 9429. Um, it gives us a spot for the validation code, so if we do require it, we can enter that validation code in at any time, um, as long as we have the customer giving us the validation code on the phone. Um, at this time, we can simply click Authorize Now to go out and be able to authorize this card. As we see here, it was very fast that we got back. We have our authorization code and our transaction number. We simply click OK and we click Accept. At this time, we will be able to go through and invoice our sales order. And we will go ahead and ship the sales order complete. When we get to our total step, we see here that our deposit available is 94.29. We have our invoice total of 94.29, and our net invoice is zero, as we are using our deposit to pay for the order. So we simply click accept. And when we go to invoice printing, you will notice on this invoice, as it comes up here, that it will show less the deposit. So let me zoom in a little bit so everyone can see. And on the right hand side, we see here that our invoice total is 94.29 less the deposit, um, which is the amount that we charged. And we can see that the invoice total is $0. At this time, if you were to do your daily sales report or update, and you did have a pre-authorization, you would be able to, at this time, perform credit card processing. So the way that pre-authorizations work within the system, 
are that you would enter them in during the sales order entry, um, same way you enter in the deposit, instead of having to enter in the pre-authorization amount though, the system automatically takes the pre-authorization amount based on the total of the order. And when you do go through and actually invoice the sales order, um, after you invoice and do your daily sales report, this is where they'll actually charge the card. So you do have the pre-authorization on the card, and at this time is when the charge would actually be run in card and in, in charge. Um, so when we click preview, it would actually run and go through. As you can see here in our daily sales journal, it does show that we have our deposit amount of 94.29. And when we look, as well as our daily deposit recap, we see here um, the invoice number that we had, invoice date, customer, and when we scroll to the right, it shows us what the order number was our credit card deposit approval number and the deposit applied amount of 9429. With that said, we'll also get into accounts receivable and we will go to cash receipts entry and we will be able to pay a invoice off um, with a credit card. So at this time we don't know what the amount is but what we'll do is we'll be able to open up our customer, American Business Futures, and select our deposit type as credit card. If we know the invoice number, we can enter the invoice numbers at this time. And when we go through, it will automatically um, enter in that amount. However, at this time, I do not know the invoice number. So the system is going to ask to confirm the credit card number. So as we can see here, there is a $0 amount. The system is simply saying, this is the credit card number that we are going to use for these invoices. So we're going to go ahead and click OK. And we can go to our lines and be able to add any invoices. So in this case, for $85 on our first invoice, and we can do multiple invoices, be able to pay this second one off for $38.20. Um, at this time, we can go back to our header and be able to enter in $123.20. And at this time, we click our credit card button, and our 123.20 is now there. If we need to enter in the validation code, we can enter it in at this time. And we can simply click Authorize Now. It's going to go through, give us our authorization code, our date, our time, and our transaction number. And we click OK. We simply click Accept. And of course, make sure our deposit is in balance. With that said, that brings us up to our virtual terminal. Now, it is not necessary to go into the virtual terminal. Um, I am simply coming in to show you how it works, as this is really what connects um, Mass with the credit card processing, as well as this is where your credit card batches are. So we do have auto settlement available if you do want to be able to auto settle every single night, or if you do want to come in manually to be able to settle, um, you can do that through the virtual terminal. It is where your open credit card batches are. And as we can see here on our virtual terminal, we have credit card in our batch summary. And we're going to go ahead and click that. Um, as we can see here, um, we have the two charges that we did, as well as a charge from earlier. And we have a few different things here. This one was started with a sales order. So we have our sales order number 202. Um, this one was done through cash receipts entry. So we have our uh, cash receipts deposit number, 7. And the one that I, I was uh, performing earlier, I did through the invoice data entry. And it shows our invoice number as a result. We can see here the totals um, of each one of the sales. And we can see that they've been checked for settlement. So at the end of the day, um, these would be able to be settled. You simply click Settle Check Transaction to be able to settle all the transactions. As well, um, if you do have a pre-authorization, and it is simply a pre-authorization, you would not actually have um, the settlement button checked. Because a pre-authorization um, has not been charged, it will not be checked for settlement. After you do go through your daily sales report and update, if the order has been invoiced, it will go through and would be able to um, charge the card. And as a result, the settlement button would be checked. So the system does know what to settle versus what not to settle um, based upon if it was a sale or a pre-authorization. 
as a result, at the end of the day, um, you would be able to simply click Settle Check Transactions. And if you had this automatically done, it would automatically be done. And you can also get the report emailed to you um, during the, the auto batch. Um, but as we can see here, we're going to review complete, and we'll close our batch. And we can see here our batch closes was successful. Um, we have our batch net and our batch item count. And we can either print this out with the print-friendly version, um, print our screen, or we can just close our batch results. Another thing to note in the virtual terminal in configuration with risk controls, this is where everything is managed. So if you notice, it did say I had address verification service of none. Um, this is because I do not have it turned on. So anything that you have turned on in the virtual terminal will require MASS to do. So if we require a, uh, CVV, this is where we would need to require it, and it would require MASS to do it. And if we wanted to require address verification service, this is where we would do it, and MASS would know as a result of what is in the virtual terminal. We also have um, reporting in the virtual terminal. So if you did want to be able to look at settled batches, you can come in here for reporting. We also do have another um, website as well, myvirtualreports.com, where you're able to see your statements and have additional reporting as well. And on a third note, um, is that you are able to do transactions in the virtual terminal. Now, the only reason why I bring this up is um, anything you do in here is not going to be done in mass. Um, and it will be done separately in mass. But if you do have a time where the server goes down and you need to be able to process a credit card, or you do have someone who is out um, maybe at a, a trade show and has a laptop and wants to be able to take a few credit card orders, you are able to use this virtual terminal anywhere where you have an internet connection and a browser. I'm actually using Google Chrome in this demonstration to show that um, it does work with any browser. So from that perspective, um, you can utilize this. Again, anything you do utilize within this and doing transactions within this um, will not go back into mass. Only those transactions that were made in mass um, are saved in mass. So with that said, um, I did want to open it up right now for some questions. I know that we have the promotion um, to speak about as well, but I, while I do have Mass up, um, we do actually have some extra time, um, so I did want to be able to open it up for questions, see if there's anything else you would like me to review um, with the time that we have. If there are any customers who would like to see the pre-authorization, we can go through that, um, and then we'll leave a, a little bit of time at the end to go through the promotion that Sage Payments uh, Solutions is currently having as well as be able to answer additional questions and talk about next steps. I don't have any questions. It seems to work pretty similar to what we're doing right now. We use PC Charge at this time. OK. And yeah, it, it is uh, pretty similar. And from that perspective, um, a few differences are um, ours is built into our system, so it's part of MASS. So as we um, update MASS, it will update um, our Sage Payment Solutions um, module, as well as the Sage Payment Solutions module within MASS is free of charge on both product and maintenance. So there is not a yearly maintenance or product cost. And any updates that would happen um, would be free as a result, um, whereas PC charge is done by an uh, independent third party. Right. When you run a credit card, uh, can you then print a receipt for the customer as well? If you run um, yeah. it in module? Yeah, there are a few different ways to do receipts. Um, so one of the ways to do receipts is to be able to make a, um, a crystal report that shows as a receipt. So you can run that receipt anytime um, within the crystal setup. You can create a, a custom report and just be able to run that for that transaction. Um, you can also be able to print out receipts in the virtual terminal. Um, so the virtual terminal does have a receipt capability depending on how you um, have it set up and how you would like to see it. Um, when you go into view here, you can always be able to view a receipt. And it looks like a, a receipt like this. Um, as well as you can have a receipt emailed to yourself automatically. So with our um, email notifications, when you set up your general email settings, um, if you are going to be on auto settle, you'll be able to have that set up as well as receipts. You can automatically have the system email you the receipt. From there, you can either email it to your customer. Um, if it is a customer that's not 
uh, present or you can print it out at that time. And the email that you would see is this credit card order confirmation. So you would simply be able to design this to look like a receipt or to be able to say whatever you want. Um, it is completely custom from that perspective um, and it's really on how often you're doing it. So I have some customers that like to see it every single time. They always send it out to their customers and this is a great solution for them within the virtual terminal. I have other customers that it's one or two customers a month might ask for a receipt and being able to just have a custom report um, in mass that they can go to and print for those customers is really the, the solution for them. So from that perspective, um, it's really up to you and how you'd like to, to see it. Okay, thanks. Any additional questions? No. All right. Well, with that said, then, I will jump into the promotion that we're currently having. So there are a, a few things, and I will talk about each one of these um, selections. But essentially, the promotion is running through September 30th, or the first 150 customers to sign up. We do still have a little bit of room. Um, but I know that towards the end of the month is when everyone does start to to put in their um, applications. So I would say, you know, the sooner the better if you are interested, um, as I'm not sure if we'll have them um, by the, the last few days of the month. But with that said, the promotion is essentially a $1,500 credit, and it can be applied a few different ways. Um, the first way is it can be applied toward the cancellation of a current payments contract with another merchant services provider. Um, the way that this one works is that after you sign up with Sage Payment Solutions, you need to process with us within 90 days, as well as you do need to be able to show us the, um, the proof that the contract has been paid and what that amount was. Um, so typically we'd be able to have a, uh, a receipt from your um, merchant services provider showing what that payment amount was and, and what it was applied to. The second option is $1,500 towards your Sage Payment Solution transaction fees. This one as well, you do need a process within 90 days of signing up. And after your first um, transaction, we will credit your account up to $150 a month for 10 months based off your um, transaction fees. So if you do have high fees and you are you know, paying over $150 a month in fees or about $150 a month in fees, this is a great um, solution. And the third one is towards upgrading to the current version of Sage ERP Mass. Um, this would include 4.4 and 4.5. So the way that that works is um, what we would need is we would need you to, again, be able to transact within 90 days with Sage Payment Solutions. And if you were on a lower version, say 4.3, 4.2, 4.1, um, you would need to upgrade by December 31st. And you'd be, you would need to show us proof of the upgrade through a screenshot as well as um, an invoice from ISM showing that they um, did do the work and what that work was as the rebate, again, is up to $1,500. And the last one um, is actually a little bit harder to get as the time is almost up, but it's a $1,500 credit toward the purchase of select Sage ERP modules or user licenses, and ISV endorsed solutions and third-party products are not eligible. And the way that this one works is that you would need to sign up with Sage Payment Solutions, start transacting, and then after your first transaction, you would be able to make your purchase with your uh, customer account manager on the modules or user licenses. But all of that needs to be done by September 30th. Um, so we did start this promotion back in August, and that was a little bit easier to um, achieve before then, but with um, having two weeks left in the month, you would need to sign up, be approved, start processing, and then make your um, purchase by the end of the month. <laughs> so that one might be a little bit harder to, to obtain, um, but it is out there still as well. So with that said, um, I did want to kick it over to Maya Green um, to talk about next steps, um, to talk about how to, to get in contact with him, and to talk a little bit about fees and, and how we're set up from Sage Payment Solutions. Maya, are you there? Yeah, I'm here, guys. All right. All right. So 
basically, if you are interested in this, you can definitely give me a call um, at a later date, uh, preferably soon, though. Or you can shoot me an email. Uh, first steps, and some of you have already uh, taken the first steps, but uh, first step is generally getting a statement. Um, I can do a comparison on what you're currently doing. Um, generally, we say one or two from recent months and uh, put together a proposal for you, send it back via email with an application. And once we get the application in and get an approval, we will send the approval to ISM for the uh, promotion um, you know, to get the credit card processing module and to uh, get the ball rolling there. Okay, so if there's nothing else, or if anyone has any questions regarding that, please know you can also contact me. I'm Sherry Palumbo. I'm your account manager at ISM. My email is sherry, S-H-E-R-R-Y, at goism.com. Does anyone have any further questions? No, I don't. I don't either. Okay, perfect. If there's anything you need, again, please feel free to follow up with us. Any further questions that come to mind, we can get you in touch with Rich or Maya so that they can answer those questions. Um, I think it's also just a good idea to you know, send your information in and see. Uh, we do find that Sage Payment Solutions does tend to come in lower uh, than other processing, so um, it wouldn't hurt just to get a quote and see what kind of money you could be saving. Okay. Okay. We appreciate your time, everyone. Uh, please feel free to check out our events tab uh, on our website and see all of our upcoming webinars. We're offering some pretty exciting stuff throughout the fall season. And uh, again, if you need anything, please feel free just to contact me. If I don't have the answer, I can point you in the right direction. Have a great day, everyone. You too. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. And Rich and Maya, thank you so much for your time today. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank Take you. care.